Welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. There's nothing you could say or do that will not interlace you. So, double crossing me is not indeed an option, E.J growled. I'll do anything E.J, Sloan rumored E.J. Leaned in close to Sloan's face. But you have formerly done so much, far too important, and it's eventually come back to suck. You. My God, espousing Jude when you knew sharp well it was Nicole's baby, E.J said with nausea. And Eric's. We lost a baby, too. Sloane combated. In gashes, Sloane claimed she had only wanted to ease Eric's pain. E.J. Noted that Eric would leave Sloane if he knew about any of her falsehoods. And if your woman ever finds out that you are not the baby's father, do you suppose she's going to actually stay with you? Indeed if she does, do you really want to raise some other man's child? Sloan yelled Dotty dot J. Noted that the world would see Jude A.S.E. dot J.S. son. But whatever happens, you formerly lost Eric. You see, to Eric and to the world, you'll be exposed as a fabricator and a pincher, E. J. said. Sloan argued that J was dragging the ineluctable discovery of Jude's maternity. With a boo, E. J left the apartment. Sloan dropped to her knees next to Jude's crib. At the small bar, Everett and Stephanie were playfully fighting over tequila shots, while Leo goggled glumly about the room. I just want to say that as absorbing and delightful and sloppy as this D. A. News is, this is so much better than digging through review libraries, is not it? Everett said. Leo watched Everett and Stephanie laugh, and he pouted. I allowed. You said this place was crawling with gorgeous, lonely men, Leo complained. Stephanie refocused out a man in the corner, and Leo heaved with delight. Leo jabbered about how the man appeared to be Spanish and that he'd been learning Spanish in medication for his honeymoon with Dimitri. Leo's smile fell down. Stephanie suggested a change of subject. What are we eating? Stephanie asked. As Everett and Stephanie gagged about the menu, Leo asked them if they had figured out if they were dating or not. We are just musketeers, but who knows what lies ahead, Everett said. Stephanie jounced in agreement. Everett and Stephanie talked about history first dates together, and Leo furrowed his brow in confusion. What's this? Leo asked. Sorry. This is just us trying to get a sense for where we're relationship-wise. Or should I say friendship-wise, Stephanie explained. Frustrated, Leo called out to the server for further drinks. And bring me, commodity that Carrie Bradshaw would drink after going to Ana.A. Meeting, Leo added. A disheveled E.J. Was surprised to see Chad staying for him in the living room of the D. Maramans. Is everything okay? Chad asked. It's been a long day, E.J, said E.J. Offered Chad a drink. I came across some information, and I do not really know what to do about it, Chad said. You seeking some fraternal counsel? E.J. asked. Chad jounced yes, and he asked for advice from Thed.A, as well. E.J. Started to admit that he was no longer Thed.A, but he changed his mind. Fire down, E.J. said. Chad showed Abigail's tablet Toe.J, and he explained his proposition about Clyde's real motive for having killed Abigail. I suppose he was going after Abby the entire time. I do not suppose it had anything to do with Belle. And I cannot help but feel like it's my fault, Chad said. What are you talking about? E.J. asked. Chad reminded E.J. That Clyde had abominated Abigail because she had cheated on Ben with Chad. And when, Clyde, set up out that Thomas was not his grandson? Okay, look, Clyde wanted Abby out of the picture for a lot of different reasons, both tete a tete and professionally, Chad said. With a moan, E.J. argued that Clyde was the only person to condemn for Abigail's murder. Chad stressed that he demanded to get to the verity. Still, it means that son of a wine hunted my woman. Down in her bedroom, if this payoff was not accidental. Now that crack E.J. is open again, Chad said. E.J. 
softened. I understand. What can I do to help? EJ asked. Chad signed, and he said he didn't know. J. Admitted that he'd hired men to find Clyde, however, anything I can do to retaliate Abigail's death, I'll do it, if there's anything. J. Promised. Thank you. I just have one further favor to ask, Chad rumored. Attended Chad up to the room where Clyde had boggled Abigail. Chad dithered before he entered. As Chad looked around, he flashed back the night he'd set up a bloody Abigail in their bed. J. Put a hand on his family's shoulder. I still cannot believe she's gone. And it does not get any easier. It just does not get easier, Chad said. When Eric returned home, Sloan and Jude were gone. Eric texted Sloan, and he wondered audibly where Sloan had gone with the baby. Roman called. I allowed. You were Sloan. She's not at home. And neither is Jude. He must be with her, Eric said. Roman explained that Sloan had dropped Jude off at the cantina. Did she say where she was going? Eric asked. Roman said he'd assumed that Sloane had wanted to spend time alone with Eric. Eric said no. I am sure she will call me soon, Eric rumored. Roman offered to babysit for the night. Eric promised to call Roman once he heard from Sloane. At the cantina. Roman and Kate murmured over baby Jude. Funny how much you remind me of your pater. When he was born, Roman said. With a shriek, Roman lamented that he hadn't been there to watch Eric grow up. You are there for Eric now. He adores you, Kate said. With a smile, Kate said Jude reminded her of Lucas, and how Lucas had kept her on her toes. And he still does, Roman said. Kate agreed, and she added that Lucas had made amends. Kate said she was proud of Lucas however, this ma bear is going to take matters into her own hands. Kate said, if Harris does not come through for him. At the small bar, Leo spotted Sloane drinking in the corner, and he said hello. Not in the mood, Sloane murmured. Leo ignored Sloane, and he asked for an update on Jude's comeliness. Sloane goggled daggers at Leo, so he replied Everett and Stephanie at their table, veritably intriguing, Leo said. I feel like there is commodity you are not telling us, Everett said. With a shake of his head, Leo noted that Lady Whistleblower had nothing to say yet. Across the bar, a warbling Sloan called out to the bartender for another drink. Everett called out to the bartender, as well. Are you sure? Stephanie asked. The night is still youthful. Everett said. Leo laughed. He's so much more animated after he has had a many, Leo said. In the doorway, Eric stepped into the room and approached Sloan. Leo watched Sloan sarcastically call Eric her knight in shining armor. Is not funny how every woman you love ends up drowning their sorrows and booze when they do not get their way? Sloan said. Confused, Eric asked Sloan what she meant. Sloan yelled for another drink. Let's get you home, Eric said as he tried to ease Sloan out of her president. I said no. Sloan yelled as she pulled down. Across the bar, Everett appeared shaken as he watched Sloan yell at Eric to leave her alone. I do not want to beget a scene, Eric rumored. You are the one causing a scene trying to forcefully drag me out of then, Sloan whizzed. Leo walked over to help Eric. Stephanie noticed that Everett appeared worried. Are you okay? Stephanie asked. At Sloan's table, Leo politely prompted Sloan to call it quits and top home. Who do you suppose you are? The both of you. Get lost. I do not want to see either one of you, Sloan said. Leo jounced and walked down. Eric asked Sloan what had happened after he'd left the house. What part of no, do not you understand? Sloan yelled. At Everett and Stephanie's table, Everett bothered audibly that Eric would hurt Sloan. Eric? Why would he hurt her? Stephanie said. Eric pulled Sloane out of her seat, and she wrenched herself down. I said no. Sloane yelled. Everett rushed over and punched Eric. 